Peggy 12. With the Elder Scrolls Online, we're bringing two different groups of players together. We've got the uh, Elder Scrolls crowd, which is used to great games like Skyrim and Oblivion and Morrowind and the older games. And then we have the MMO crowd, which is used to great, all the great MMOs for, from the last 15 years. We're bringing them all together into one great game and we're really excited to tell you about it. Elder Scrolls Online, everything you need to know about it is right in the name. It's Elder Scrolls, but it's online. And when the team set out, they wanted to create strategic real-time combat. We wanted to create a lot of world immersion. We wanted to create a, a landscape that was rewarded exploration. But all of that had to be brought together with really great social systems. So Elder Scrolls Online, it's set a thousand years before Skyrim. And not only is it a thousand years before Skyrim, but it draws on all the legends and everything that you've read about in the books that you find in Elder Scrolls games. So we've got 20 years of lore to draw upon. We made sure the Morrowind serial and Skyrim feel like they do in Elder Scrolls 3, 4, and 5. The art style is right in line with those titles. Now you can explore all of Tamriel. You can return to places that you've seen before, and you can explore new places that you've never been. This is an Elder Scrolls combat system. Moving your mouse will make you look around uh, and aim your weapon. You can tap your left click to attack, hold it to power, hold your right click to block, and of course, sprinting, crouching, and sneaking around play a role. All of our characters are designed so that hundreds of them can be on screen at one time. You're going to have lots of customization options to make your character look unique. You'll find Dwarven armors, Daedric armors, Elven armors, basically all the types of armor styles uh, and customization options that you expect from an Elder Scrolls game and the Elder Scrolls lore. By far the worst experience of any online game is at its launch, when you're trying to find your friends, um, you can't find people, you create a character on one shard, and then you find out everyone else is on another shard and you have to move. That experience is not good. So we are not going to have shards. We have a technology we call Mega Server, where all players are on one server. So all your friends are right there, you just create a character, you click play, and you go. The game is smart about where to put you. It puts you in game spaces with your friends, with your guildmates. It's a way to be connected with everyone and the game figures out where to put you. So with Elder Scrolls Online, you know, one of the big things is that you'll be able to get together with your friends and overcome obstacles. So things like public dungeons, heroic dungeons, but most importantly, when you participate with your friends or even just with strangers, you're not competing for resources. You're all working together to overcome something and you get equal credit for that. As a player, you're able to start off by picking one of nine races. Uh, you'll be able to pick a class. Um, so that's just the start though. From there, all of the choices you make with quests, all of the choices you make in which abilities you choose, which weapons you use, which armor you use, really help make your character stand out in the world. The basis for the customization system in Elder Scrolls Online is that you can use whatever weapon or armor type you actually want to use. Uh, you can play as a heavy armor character who's a tank, 
with a bow, or you can play as a mage who uses a two-handed weapon, or you can play as a sneaky guy who runs around healing people. Sort of the combination that you uh, selected out of what armor type you use, what weapon type you use, and what class you use really creates a unique character experience for you. Uh, one of the things you're going to be able to do that's going to make you stand out is you have perks. For instance, perks allow you to become a werewolf or a vampire or maybe even have special pets. But it's not just about that. There are other things like how you increase your stamina, how you increase your magic, or how you increase your health that really take you from your initial class choice and it makes you stand out because you're saying these are the things that are important to me. This is the way I want to play. This is the role I want to take in combat. Questing in Elder Scrolls Online was built around a pretty simple concept, and that was that we wanted the player to explore. And we wanted, when the player explored, for them to be able to see something around a corner and say, oh, well, I was on this quest, but now I see something over there that's really interesting. And so they had this decision point of, you know, which thing do I do next? And that's really where we want the player to go. It's not, what do I do next? It's, which one of these things do I do next? The way a player finds quests in our game uh, is really through exploration. As they wander around the world, we have an on-screen compass, and that really points out the areas of opportunity or, or, or points of interest to the player. When the player finds a point of interest in the world, this is really where all of our story content is. And, and they're an opportunity for the player to make a change in the world. And, and a really good example of that is there's a werewolf invasion. Uh, when the player gets there, um, they, they fend off the, the werewolf invasion, they save the town, and every time you come back to that, that village, uh, you'll be remembered and thanked um, by the villagers. The werewolves will be gone just like you would have uh, in Oblivion as the Hero of Clutch. Once you hit level 50, that's really where the game opens up. At this point, you're going into Serial to PvP, or you're deciding you want to go on a heroic raid with your guild and your friends, or maybe you might go into an adventure zone, which is our way of getting you into a zone where you can play solo, you can play with a small group, or you can play with a really large group to overcome obstacles. PvP in Elder Scrolls Online is focused around taking uh, various structures in Cyrodiil. Uh, if you remember Cyrodiil from Oblivion, the space is very large, and that's a perfect setting for having three alliances fight each other. During this timeline, Imperial City is up for grabs and there's no Emperor, so players are going to be fighting using trebuchets, catapults, all kinds of weaponry to take and hold keeps, structures, and resource fixtures around the keep to actually uh, give the opportunity to crown one of themselves as an Emperor. It's really important to us that you know PvP isn't just a veteran uh, game. It's got to be something that people can do from the very beginning because you want to be comfortable in getting into this. So we make sure that everybody is on equal footing. So even at level 10, you can go into our PvP area and really have a great experience and a good time. With a game the size of the Elder Scrolls Online, it's really hard to, in one demo, one presentation, one video to list everything about the game. So what you've heard today are the basics. Over time, we're going to go into more depth than everything you've heard about today and then all the other systems which we haven't talked about yet. All these elements are going to come together and make Elder Scrolls Online the next great online RPG.